Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to be here this morning. As Simon was saying, uh, this is a fantastic opportunity to celebrate some of the things that the Strategic Priorities Fund has enabled and some of the connections that you and others have made across the research and innovation system. So I just wanted to take you back to the origins of the Strategic Priorities Fund and explain how it fits into UKRI's overall strategy. Um, as Simon explained, I'm uh, Executive Director of Strategy, Performance and Engagement at UKRI. I job share with a woman called Emma Linsell, who you may or may have come across, um, and we sit on the senior team for um, UKRI, helping Ottoline Lysa, the Chief Executive, to, uh, to shape where the organisation is going and how we bring the work of the seven research councils, Innovate UK and Research England, together. So I just wanted to start, as I say, with what the Strategic Priorities Fund is and uh, where, where it came from. Um, if you hear about Sir Paul Nurse's report, uh, that there, there are at least two. He probably has written many, but uh, it, there is scope for confusion because he has recently, in the last year or so, written one about, one about the um, research environment and the research uh, landscape. But he wrote a different one uh, five or more years ago, which was about how the research councils interact. And his recommendation was that they should be brought together uh, into a single organisation, which is the origins of UK research and innovation. He also recommended in that report that there should be a common fund uh, across the whole of UKRI to uh, support interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary collab collaborations and to uh, support work which the government does uh, and their priorities. So the, the work which, which you, have been, you have, have been associated with uh, through NERC's uh, work, which you're going to celebrate later today, uh, is, is the, the embodiment of that uh, vision which Sir Paul has had in his report. Uh, it was a 850, £830 million investment uh, uh, over 34 programmes and two ways of activity. And as I say, it has two sort of twin aims, one of which is to bring different disciplines together and the other of which is to work with government departments. And in fact... 91% of the total spend across both waves of the Strategic Priorities Fund has had a really close partnership with a government uh, department or agency. So this is, I mean, this is really core to what UKRI is all about. The point is to, uh, to bring dis different disciplines together to help uh, cast light on problems from different angles uh, in order to um, in order to solve problems, and it's really core to Ottoline's vision for UKRI uh, to support a really diverse research and innovation system. And when she talks about diversity, she's not just talking about diversity in terms of protected characteristics. She's talking about diversity in terms of different ideas, different institutions, different people, different experiences. And, and another of, the, of the, uh, the, the principles which she has is about connectivity through the system. So this, this, this fund has been really important to kind of test out some approaches um, uh, for, for, for that. Um, so what have we learned? So the, uh, the, the, the top blocks just give you uh, the timeline for the, um, for, the, for the overall evaluation which we're conducting into the Strategic Priorities Fund. Um, we have uh, we've discovered that uh, the, the um, oh sorry the, we've discovered that this, this, the, this approach of bringing people together to solve problems has supported um, high quality. Um, multi interdisciplinary research and innovation. So that, that has worked. Most of the programmes, as I said earlier, are addressing government priorities and policy needs. And it's, it's sort of um, teased out some of the, the inherent ability within the funding system to, to address priorities and emerging opportunities and given us some sense of what is actually possible. Um, and we have had lots of really um, high quality and positive feedback from stakeholders about 
how people have been able to, to work in a different way as a result of um, the SPF. Um, this gives you, I mean, this is numerical kind of uh, nonsense, really, but uh, it, it doesn't really give you any sense of quality, but uh, you'll be very pleased to hear we've supported nearly 2,000 uh, publications, uh, seven instances of intellectual property, six spin-outs, um, and, and you can read the rest of the numbers uh, uh, six, uh, of yourself. Um, there, so we have funded 861 uh, individual projects, which, as I said, were under, underneath the individual programmes. Um, and uh, three of the 34 programmes are concluded now, uh, but many of them are still, um, are still in, in train, and we still await some of the outputs from those. So we have... Um, we, we, uh, we, the Strategic Priorities Fund was a result of uh, an initial wave of funding, as I said, um, a, a, a few years ago. As part of our spending review bid for the current spending review, and we're already starting to think about the next one, uh, we put together some ideas um, for how we could build on the successes of the Strategic Priorities Fund. Uh, which is, is we've done in a slightly different way to the way that the fund has worked. So rather than having a fund into which people bid, we, we instead uh, designated five themes, which you can see there, building a greener future, building a secure and resilient world, creating opportunities, securing better health, and tackling infection. And we have built some programs across UKRI around those themes, which enable us, enables us then to... Um, with a little bit of money for each of the themes, we think probably about 75 million over a three-year period, to draw together actually things that are being funded across the councils for all sorts of other, um, uh, for other kinds of programs, whether that is uh, discovery research or um, uh, innovation programs or supporting of individuals in their careers to, to, to kind of... Uh, to solve, solve issues which are related to those strategic themes. So that is how we're building on, um, on what, what the success of the Strategic Priorities Fund. The other thing which we're doing, uh, again, this is relatively small scale, and basically this is in order to try and tease out where there is demand that we don't yet know about. We have an interdisciplinary response mode uh, pilot, which um, uh, is is a call for people to come together where they think that there's something really innovative that they would be able to do in an interdisciplinary way. And as I say, that is a way of discovering what, what, what demand is there and what the possibilities are, which I think is tremendously exciting. Um, so uh, there are, uh, this is this just this slide, uh, I mean, it's, it's a very busy slide uh, with lots and lots of boxes on it. I just wanted to give you some sense of the breadth of the Strategic Priorities Fund and how, 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 how widely it goes and how much um, there is to, to, to explore in terms of um, what, what people have been using the money for. So uh, the, 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 the sort of the oval in the centre is the Wave 1, wave one projects, which are the ones that are more well-developed, and then the ones around the outside are the Wave 2 ones, which are still um, uh, in development. So if I can just take um, a, a few examples, um, and um, uh, I, I can't scroll down my notes. I don't know why that is. That's, uh, I may have to make up this as I'm going along. So, the, um, so if you look at the bottom left of the AI and science, data science for engineering, health, and government, that is uh, using AI for, um, for, for improving the way in which way in which we use data science and artificial intelligence in priority, priority areas of the economy. So, for instance, uh, engineering and urban planning. Um, there's also um, one which is uh, top left, analysis for innovators. Uh, that is uh, where, we're, uh, where people from different research councils have helped with small companies to improve the way that they, um, they, they, their, their production processes or the way in which they think about their, um, their, their business in order to grow more quickly. So there is an example of where 
um, we've used AI with um, a, a cashmere company to improve their, um, their, their how they, they, they check their products in order to uh, reduce waste. And I would tell you about more, but I can't scroll down the, the, the notes pages, so uh, I, I will just continue. Um, so, um, but I, I just wanted to I wanted to to give you this slide in order to. Um, to, to show that we, you know, there, there are lots and lots of things going on across all of the councils and a wide variety of, um, of subject areas and um, government departments. So that brings, then, it brings us then to, uh, to, to the, what you're celebrating today, which is about uh, constructing a digital environment uh, and how you can use um, digital tools to, um, to improve how we, 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 we know what's going on in the environment. Um, so that was a budget of 10 million, uh, which, ran, which was running from 2018 to 2023, and uh, NERCA in the lead, and you're gonna learn a huge amount much more about that today. And then, as Simon was saying, uh, tomorrow and um, what day would it be? Thursday, um, you are going to, well, the people are going to be looking at the uh, landscape decisions, which is about uh, how land is used and bringing different interdisciplinary um, uh, approaches and knowledge in order to be able to do that in a, a better way. So, again, 10.5 million, uh, a similar, similar budget, similar timescales, and a slightly different set of people involved in that. So um, that was uh, what I wanted to say and to give you just a little bit of context for your conversations today. I'm extremely happy to take questions um, and uh, if, if that would be helpful or equally uh, not, uh, as you like. Or comments or suggestions, anything welcome. If there's no questions, that's absolutely fine. Maybe the, the first question is, will there, will there be another Strategic Priorities Fund in, in the future? Thank you very much. Will there be another, another such programme in the future? Well, well there, there may be. As, as I said earlier, the, um, the, 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 the way in which we're building on it now is through these two uh, programmes, which is the Strategic Themes and the Interdisciplinary Response Mode. Um, I think um, we, we're in the process of thinking about what we might want to bid for for the next spending review and how we might want to pitch that. So if, if you, you know, if that's something that you think would be welcome, uh, it would be really good to understand uh, how that can contribute in a way that is different from other things that we might put our money into, such as a supercomputer or uh, a certain number of PhDs. There's always trade-offs uh, in the system uh, which we need to think about. Thanks very much. Um, so, uh, sorry, Kate Gill from Kew, uh, Royal Botanics Gardens, Kew. And one of the questions that I always struggle with, and we were talking about it just before, about mm. the multidisciplinary teams. Culturally, that's really hard. Mm. And it's culturally hard to put everybody in the room together to actually talk the same language, mm. but then also get them through the, the filtering of funding with people who have other filters on their own kind of assessments. Um, looking back, how do you think progress has developed? Um, on, on street project fund on the cultural kind of conversation. Yeah, I, th I think that's. A, I think it's a really good question, um, and it's you know when people have spent their whole lives thinking about things through a particular prism um, and bidding through mo for money through a particular prism, it's quite difficult to break out of that. Um, we, I think, we are making progress and uh, giving opportunities for people to collaborate and giving them sort of a reason to to to, to work together is is really good. The other thing that we are doing uh, across UKRI is trying to bring together um, some of our people and careers type programs. So at the moment, if you want to do a PhD, I can't remember how many different uh, varieties of PhD you can apply for, but it's a very large number. And we're looking to rationalise that so that it's simpler for people to think about things in a more cross-disciplinary, uh, cross cross-system way. Um, we also um, think of it as being our job, and this comes to the, the connectivity thing that I was talking about earlier, 
uh, to facilitate people talking to each other and to help them to make the connections. So that's another thing that we, we put quite a lot of energy into. And also uh, into um, engagement with the public because the public don't think about things uh, in a disciplinary way. They just want problems solved and they want to understand how, how research and science can help them. So those are different ways in which we're approaching the problem. But I think, I think it's... Um, you know, I think it, it's definitely something that we need to continue to think about. Thank you for the question. Um, in quite a lot of large organisations, it can be hard enough joining the dots and making the right connections, mm. even within that organisation. Um, I was wondering what you've learnt about what does and doesn't work in terms of bringing people, the right people together around the problems and helping those connections and what can be learnt going forwards to sort of help increase that success. Yeah, so I think, um, like I said uh, in answer to the previous question, giving people a purpose to collaborate is really helpful. But I also think, um, and, and Kate and I were just talking about this uh, beforehand as well, giving people opportunities to touch base which which don't have any purpose. So kind of, you know, a cafe where lots of people be, and, and post COVID where lots of people are working remotely, that can be tricky. But those conversations that happen, uh, the water co cooler moments and the, the, the kind of the cafe moments, giving people a, uh, an opportunity just to, to talk about what they're doing and, and why it might be of interest to somebody else. That, that I think, is really, really powerful. And kind of giving, uh, putting, putting time and energy into creating those opportunities, um, even if they don't initially go anywhere uh, and that it takes some time for, for connections to be forged, I think is really important. Thank you. Hello, uh, Jessica Rushworth, Digital Catapult. Um, I've got a question about the um, innovation side. So how do you, I think the beauty of UKRI sh should be that it can move all the way through yep. from basic to commercialization. Um, and I'm very pro that interdisciplinary nature, and I know how difficult this is to achieve as well. Um, how do you bring in the innovation elements and how can you progress some of the projects that have achieved their research aims into innovation and commercialization? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to embody Ottilie now. I saw her give a speech here a few months ago, uh, which she was a recipient of a very prestigious prize, and she gave a she gave a speech standing right here where where I am. And she she's got this thing about how linearity in science is really bad, uh, and uh, you should always think about things in in, in circles. Uh, so I'll come to I'll come to your question, uh, which, which I think um, I think that we we need to we need to. Uh, acknowledge that it, it isn't necessarily a linear process and bring bring people together bring bring some of the innovation to to the uh, to the discovery and bring the discovery to the innovation uh, because this is at the end of the day this is all about people and all about making connections I think it's I, I mean you're right it's a, a tricky uh, nut to crack um, and um, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a passionate uh, believer in the fact that it, UKRI is uh, unique precisely because of the of Innovate UK being part of the same organisation. I don't think we've, uh, we've capitalised on that sufficiently in the short five years that we've been in existence. I think there's a lot more to do. Um, but I think um, uh, regionally... Uh, we have uh, we have people innovate innovation um, innovate UK uh, people on the ground in different parts of the country, and I think that is also a really powerful way, as I was saying earlier, of convening people across the country. Does that help? Not really. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're right. We should showcase some of those things because I think um, I, that that's the other thing, isn't it? That it's it's always much easier to do these things when you've seen an example of how it's worked before. So uh, yeah, we should definitely think about that. And you know, events like these are really great because they are celebrating some of the things that have been facilitated. So uh, that's a way of telling the stories. Um, 
my question is regarding the spinouts. Uh, is there any programs that available that will support the spinouts, especially uh, from the projects that came up? Yeah, or, uh, Innovate UK has a wide variety of different um, uh, different programs and different ways of supporting spinouts. And actually, when you look at um, some of the success stories of uh, companies in the UK, you can sometimes see that they've had they've had kind of support early on from um, from different research councils and later on from uh, Innovate UK. And I know that um, Indra Mukherjee, who's in charge of Innovate UK, is working really hard to make getting getting sort of information about what what support is available and using their website in a slightly different way to help to help people to to signpost them to the right um the right support that's available some of it is grants some of it is loans some of it is kind of um uh, just sort of uh, um coaching support and and that kind of thing uh, but there's there's a huge number of things that are available through innovate uk